Hi everyone, welcome to Alternavita. This week I have a post for you about, again, about wheat germ. And this time it's about wheat germ extract and cancer. One thing always leads to another. And I always kind of um, just put metabolic syndrome and uh, cancer as a separate category of conditions that existed and can develop whether a person has been breastfed or not. And now um, this important topic has um, tied them together in more ways than uh, I could have imagined. So I don't quite know how I found this particular substance. I can't remember. Um, it's one that I personally have never tried. I always wanted to try it. But in 35 years, out of the hundreds and hundreds of supplements I have used, this is one in particular I never actually tried. So, but it seems quite amazing. And since it is a food and since it is safe, and since it seems to have some amazing effects along in, um, mechanisms that I know pretty well by now, I thought um, it was worth sharing. And since I have been writing about medicinal foods and superfoods, um, once I began seeing all of these studies, including new ones, I uh, began to think this was... Um, very important. So um, one thing um, that led to this is the fact, I don't know if you have been paying attention to recent health news, but um, insulin is now being suspect, is playing a key role in the development of cancer. So uh, that was just one aspect that may have led to this. And um, it's becoming a little more clear as to why. So um, first I wanna give an update on the Rishi. Um, I can't believe it. I wrote that in March 13th already. But um, I took it in probably until the middle of May. And um, I can't say I noticed anything substantially different. Um, I'm not going to say it was ineffective or effective because um, I have a tendency to think that Males, uh, mushroom supplements seem to work better in men than they do women. And that's just something I um, noticed from experience. Not that I have any real data to back that up, but that's just a personal um personal observation that I've noticed over the years that men seem to rave about mushrooms and the effects of mushrooms more than women. And that could just be some sort of adapt adaptogenic um, food that maybe uh, in the development of males. Males spent more time in the woods, who knows? 
you know, I don't know the reasons why that might be. It's just uh, something I've noticed from experience. So uh, in regards to Rishi, I will probably be tossing the remaining Rishi that I have and um, uh, but my my next mushroom supplement I will not be tossing. Then I will write about here in a few weeks or maybe another month or two. Um, I will not be tossing that one. So I just wanted to give you an update on that. Um, and it might just be the form. Um, I know some people love the tea and some people love the extracts and some people love the um, more bioavailable forms of reishi, especially maybe the fermented. So, um, which this was not, it was simply a uh, reishi powder. Okay, so let's get on to this story. And um, I wish I was better at memorizing all of this so that I could um, not have to read. But unfortunately, as much as I've tried to simplify it, and then have it uh, rewritten in AI to a lower level. I still can't remember everything off the top of my head. So I'll be reading. Cancer has, the uh, title is uh, Fermented Wheat Germ Induces Autophagy and Restores Mitochondrial Function. So I think you'll agree that's pretty remarkable. Cancer has been considered as mitochondriopathy. Almost 100 years ago, Otto Warburg spotted something special in cancer cells, aerobic glycolysis. This change in metabolism is a big deal for cancer cells. It helps them make enough building blocks like nucleotides, proteins, and lipids to grow fast. Unlike quiet cells, fast-growing ones need lots of carbon and nitrogen so they don't focus on making energy, ATP, the usual way. Oxfos. I can't remember what the XOX stands for. Oxygen phosphorus, maybe. Instead, they use mitochondrial enzymes to build substances they need. They also don't pile up NADH and make less ATP by turning extra pyruvate into lactic acid. This shift from oxphos to glycolysis is controlled by a key enzyme, LDHA, which slows down glucose processing in mitochondria. This change affects important functions like cell cycle control and cell death, help, helping cancer cells survive and grow. So it's not a surprise that cancer often comes with dysfunctional mitochondria and metabolism. So that's apoptosis and that's a good thing. And, um, Scientists have tried to stop this Warburg effect by blocking LDHA or another enzyme, PDK, to target cancer cells without harming normal cells. In the 1980s, Nobel winner Albert Zent Georgi's work, um, I'm not sure. The origin of that name inspired research on fermented wheat germ extract as a possible cancer fighter. By the 1990s, studies began showing fermented wheat germ extract, in, fermented wheat germs ex, impact on glycolysis and its power against cancer in live animals. 
small studies in people also supported its use in cancer care. Here, researchers explore a potent fermented wheat germ extract. They found it boosts mitochondria, helps process pyruvate better, and slows down the Warburg effect, all while, all, while, all while being safe for the liver and overall health. And the title of the paper is Mito Oncology Agent Fermented Extract Suppresses the Warburg Effect, Restores ox Oxidative mit Mitochondrial Activity, and Inhibits In Vivo Tumor Growth. And wheat germ induces autophagy and normalizes mitochondria metabolic activity. So I've added a couple things to this this morning in case you had seen it already. So the findings, the activity, activity this substance is called A250. The activity of A250 was tested in cell proliferation assays on seven different cancer cell lines. <clears throat> kidney, melanoma, ovarian, breast, colon, and two metastatic prostate cell lines. And um, it was also metastatic ovarian and metastatic breast. This study shows how fraction A250, a super concentrated form of Fermented wheat, germ, for, fermented wheat germ extracts active parts has some amazing actions. It changes the sourness in cells by lowering lactic acid and switches up cell metabolism, moving away from the Warburg effect to boost how much carbon goes into the mitochondria and gets used up. <clears throat> A250 also opens up the later outer layer of the mitochondria, letting cytochrome C out of the cell's jelly-like substance. This cytochrome C plays a big part in making cells die, especially through mitochondria. Plus A250 helps cut down on glycolysis, sugar processing in cells, making it tough for cancer cells to get the nutrients they need. <clears throat> Tests show that A250's work with mitochondria slows down tumor growth in live animals and helps them live longer. Even after two weeks of treatment, the mice didn't show any signs of toxicity and looking closely at their livers confirmed. Um, I believe that was biopsy. A250 doesn't harm normal tissue. Cancer is often linked with dysfunctional mitochondria, so fixing how they work, <clears throat> like boosting the Krebs cycle and managing cell death better, <clears throat> sorry, could be a game changer in cancer care. Some researchers have already suggested using metabolic treatments to fix mitochondria. And our work shows that fermented wheat germ extract does similar outcomes without being toxic. A250 could be a benefit along with regular cancer treatments by balancing cell energy and making cancer cells more likely to die. So then serendipitously i saw this short on youtube and um, it was specifically talking about mitochondrial damage and as you know from this particular doctor dr robert lustig the only substances that actually reach the mitochondria no drugs reach the mitochondria and the only substances that actually reach the mitochondria, our foods. So um, I put a clip in here from him, which calories cause the greatest mitochondrial damage. 
and I use the term calories because that's what he's specifically referring to in this snippet about how calories aren't fungible. Calories from fats are different from calories from proteins, etc. And which ones cause the most damage? And they are in order, fructose, trans fats, BCAAs, branch chain, branch chain amino acids from corn-fed animal meat products and alcohol. So, I've also included a little chart here for you to see the normal cycle of ATP and cellular respiration, how it works. Cancer has been thought of as a problem with the mitochondria. The parts of cells that create energy. Oh, by the way, I wanted to say that um, when he explains this, he also explains how this these lead to insulin resistance. So that's where insulin comes in because the liver is a key component. So cancer has been thought of as a problem with the mitochondria, the parts of cells that create energy. Because of this, fixing how mitochondria work, specifically by activating the Krebs cycle and managing cell death processes, could lead to important advances in cancer treatment. One idea proposed by Schwartz and others is to use metabolic treatments like hydroxycitrate and alpha lipoic acid to restore mitochondrial function. And I added that because. Um, I have known people who were so, um, oh my goodness, I can't even remember the syndrome. It was similar to POTS and um, uh, maybe encephalopathy that they literally could not live without <clears throat> alpha, -lipo alpha -lipo lipoic acid. So if you're familiar with people who swear by that, you might um, <clears throat> that might help you to understand how important fermented wheat germ extract is because it has similar effects. Mm -hmm. As a non-toxic easy to take and effective tumor growth inhibitor, fermented wheat germ extract, also known as A250, and by the way, when they tried um, compared it against the whole substance, um, the effects were similar. And if you read the, the entire PDF, although it's pretty complicated, I'm sure you'll glean enough from it to gain benefit. Um, so it could support chemo and other treatments by balancing cellular energy and boosting apoptosis. Fermented wheat germ extract is a mix of molecules from fermented wheat germ studied extensively for fighting cancer safely. Researchers focused on the active parts using special methods and got a consistent part called A250. This is probably for drug development, which is about 3% Fermented wheat germ extract. A250 was tested on seven cancer cell types, working better on some than others. It triggers cell death pathways showing up in tests by boosting cytochrome C and changing proteins linked to energy in cells. So it also affected gene expression of proteins, especially um, regarding nutrition. So TESS also proved A250 cuts down on lactic acid, showing its anti-Warburg effect. 
So A250 were just like the whole ferment and meat germ extract in fighting melanoma in mice, even though it's just a tiny part of the original mix. A small dose slowed tumor growth by 68% and increased survival by over 50%. It also boosted proteins in cells and had no harmful effects. So after two weeks, this particular, the last article was 12 weeks, and that was with whole uh, wheat germ as a food substance. This was with fermented wheat germ extract and it went for two weeks whereas the last one went for 12 weeks to see a um, substantial decrease in fatty liver. Uh, both substances, fermented wheat germ extract and A250, made tumors much smaller. The control group had big tumors about four centimeters while the fermented wheat germ extract group had around two cent centimeters in the A250 group, less than two centimeters. Treated animals also lived longer from 28 to 43 days, so it increased their lifespans by about 50%. So this study used fractionated A250, which was a component isolation from 10 grams of whole standardized commercially available fermented wheat germ extract provided by a bioscience company. <clears throat> and fraction A250 was 2% to 3% of the whole biomass. Safety, gluten sensitive and other allergen sensitive people should avoid wheat germ. Refined wheat germ oil typically contains no gluten. Wheat germ was well tolerated and is a natural food. Wheat germ and individual components have been extensively studied in thousands of papers for a cross range of conditions. Wheat germ oil has similar benefits. According to the US FDA, Wheat germ oil is gluten-free if it contains no more than 20 parts per million of gluten. This is because the refining process typically removes all gluten proteins from wheat germ oil. However, it's possible that refined oils may contain trace amounts of gluten. And one more thing I am going to add to the next um, the next articles, which one I don't know, or it might be a sing single post on the history of how flour processing actually made flour much less healthy. And that began, um, what year was it? 1870 to 1890. And by the 1930s, they began to see um, conditions like beriberi, pellagra, other vitamin deficiencies. And um, I will help you see, since I know these charts, charts and statistics specifically and have studied them for a long time that this closely correlates with the rise of um, one the requirement for insulin two, the rise in cancer, and three, the rise in uh, metabolic syndrome and other malnutrition syndromes that were very, very prevalent. The more popular white flour became. And um, the reason they removed the wheat germ and the bran is for a longer shelf life and originally they stone mill, stone mill ground um, wheat, and they it could not remove all of the, the wheat germ and the bran, but when they moved to um, steel roller processing of flour, 
that removed everything, including the oil, pretty much making flour a um, completely uh, rendering flour having no nutritional benefit whatsoever. So I, I really wanted to learn the timeline of when this began to occur so that I could um, help myself judge the um, truthfulness of this epidemic and when it, you know, really began to gain steam as compared to people who lived before this time and seemingly could eat all of the bread they wanted without um, ending up with metabolic syndrome. And I knew it just, I knew that just um, added sugar and processed foods, um, although being barely highly culpable, um, those kind of things really didn't gain the amount of steam they have today until around 1970. So um, I just wanted to clarify in my mind how how this all correlates, although correlate, correlation doesn't equal causation, but it's, it's a strong, it's a good indicator of giving you a map to follow. Okay, everyone, on a personal note, um, I would strongly, strongly um, appreciate your support. Um, my daughter um, has been accepted into a very good school for college. Um, she has a 4.0 uh, GPA. She's received uh, $100,000 in scholarships. And unfortunately, um, that covers only about 80% of her first year attendance. And um, if she does not come up with the re remaining balance uh, for her tuition for her freshman year, um, she might not be able to go. And so far, um, she has been turned down twice for um, student loans. And it has just been um, heartbreaking for um, her and me and her father. And unfortunately, um, with the economy being the way it has been for our family in particular the last year. Um, the last year of all years that we have been in business together. Um, it was the worst year we have ever had in uh, 23 years in business. And um, we aren't able to help her very much, although we are desperately trying to. So um, I've pretty much been crying now for days. And um, for my daughter who has worked so hard throughout her school career and has made us so proud and who has a bright future. She's taking English by the way and she wants to be a writer and she wants to maybe minor in art therapy. Um, It would be devastating if she wasn't able to um, take advantage of this. 
So um, I would strongly ask for your support. You can donate on my website. You can purchase any one of my books. My ebook now is very affordable at $9.99. Once I compile enough articles on these medicinal foods, they will probably either be added to Immune for Life or um, become a book on their own. However, I do not think you can separate these two um, these two conjoined epidemics because, um, as you know, the formation of the microbiome is extremely important for digestion, the immune system, and um, nutrition, as well as the ability to create cellular energy and biosynthesis. So I don't really think they can be um, separated. However, I don't know. Um, I haven't got that far to think about it yet, but um, I'm sure this is since people are always um, so focused on diet um, and don't understand quite how the root of the formation of your microbiota is the key to everything. Uh, I felt the diet was an important part of the story, as well as um, when it comes to diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and cancer. As I said before, they were things that um, could happen regardless of whether a person was optimally breastfed or not. So I would truly appreciate your support. And um, you can visit my Facebook page. And I would be happy to help you with any questions you might have regarding any of these new blog posts. So thanks again, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.